Hey everybody, this is the Part-Time Economist, and today we are finally clearing up all of those questions that you have about fixed costs, variable costs, the shutdown rule, contribution margin. So let's jump right into this. Now, what we have here is a registration form for a Christmas fair, and at this Christmas fair, people bring homemade goods to sell. Perhaps they want to sell cookies or wreaths or gingerbread houses, but the basic point is that they have to pay for a booth to sell. So we see that the price here to register for a booth is $175. Now, this means that once you register, that is a fixed cost. Whether you show up and sell a gingerbread house or a wreath or a flower arrangement, it doesn't matter. Your cost is fixed at $175. Now, just for our example, let's suppose that all we make is wreaths. The variable cost of each wreath is $25. So, depending on the number of wreaths that we actually bring to sell, our cost will increase. So, the total cost is a function, so TC is some function of fixed cost plus variable cost times quantity. And just making that more realistic, we can put that TC is equal to the $175 plus quantity times $25. So this represents our costs. And what we can see is that our fixed costs are there no matter what. Whether we bring 100 wreaths to sell or whether we stay home or we bring one wreath to sell, we still are going to pay that $175. Now, the total cost, as we said, depends on the number of wreaths that we make to sell. So in this specific example, if we have two wreaths, we are going to have two times $25, which is $50 plus $175 for a total cost of $225. Okay, you're probably thinking, total cost is great, and I understand that costs are a part of it, but I want to know how much money I can actually make. Now, this is where an accounting concept known as contribution margin comes in. Contribution margin is essentially the, it's the difference between the price, the revenue that you get from selling something, and the variable cost. So let's let's think of it this way. Let's say that I sell each wreath for $50. And we already know that the variable cost of each wreath is equal to $25. So the contribution margin of that wreath is going to be equal to $25, which is the difference between the price and the variable cost of creating that wreath. So what does contribution margin actually mean? The way I like to think about it is contribution margin is how much free cash we have after paying what it creates to take a, to create a product. So if it costs us $25 to create a product and we sell it for 50, that free cash that we have left over is $25. Now, this contribution margin has two functions. First, it goes to paying down our fixed cost. So if we sell one wreath, we pay for that wreath, and we get to put $25 towards covering this fixed cost. If we sell two wreaths, we cover the variable cost for both of those, and we get to put $50 towards paying down that fixed cost. So this leads to an interesting concept known as the break even point. And the break even point is simply found by dividing my fixed costs by the contribution margin. So we know that our fixed cost is $175 and we know that our contribution margin is $25. So how many wreaths do we need to sell to break even? Well, we simply divide 175 by 25 and we find that we need to sell seven wreaths to break even. Now, of course, this is assuming that the wreaths sell for exactly this same price, which of course in the real world can change a little bit, but this is more to help you understand the concepts. So we have the break even point of seven wreaths. Anything after seven wreaths is going to be profit. So the eighth wreath that we make, it's going to cost us $25 to make it, but the sale price of $50 will be able to cover that amount. 
Now, additionally, we want to know what are we going to do about shutting down? What if we can't cover our variable costs? And this is something that really, really caused me a lot of trouble when I was in undergrad. So the shutdown rule essentially says that sometimes, even though you have a fixed cost, you need to shut down the business because you are actually losing more money by producing than you would if you simply closed down the factory. So let's try to go through an example of the shutdown rule. Let's suppose that we still have fixed costs of $175. Now, as we said, even if we close down the factory, even if we don't sell a single wreath, we are still going to have these fixed costs of $175. We can't get that money back. We can't sell the factory in the short run. We still owe property taxes on the factory. These are costs we can't get rid of. So if we do absolutely nothing, we will owe the fixed cost. Now. As we talked about earlier, there is a certain variable cost associated with each wreath. And we learned that the variable cost was $25. Now, as long as we are selling these for a price that's greater than variable cost, we have a positive contribution margin. But sometimes what we find that happens is companies cannot even cover their cost of production. So let's suppose instead that my variable cost of producing each wreath is $100 and the price of each wreath is still only going to be $50. I'm putting a lot more effort, a lot more resources into creating these wreaths than they are actually worth. Now, let's turn this on the flip side and as you remember from the previous example we had a positive contribution margin here well here our contribution margin is actually a negative fifty dollars because it's costing us a hundred to produce each wreath but we're only getting fifty back from the sale price so essentially each wreath that we produce and sell actually puts us fifty dollars more behind so Instead of selling the first wreath and then having only $150 of fixed cost to pay off, we now have a fixed cost of $175 plus an additional $50 that we are short from producing and selling this wreath below cost. So the more we are producing, we're actually getting further and further down into debt. So let's 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 do an example. Let's say we have fixed cost is equal to 175. Okay, we have our fixed cost. The first wreath that we produce is going to take $100 to produce. We're going to sell it for 50. It's going to be a minus $50. So it's going to put us in the hole an additional $50. So now instead of simply owing the fixed cost of our factory, we also owe 175 plus 50. So now we owe 225, right? The the point here is that in Instead of getting further out of debt, we're actually going further and further into debt. We're getting further behind because we can't even cover the cost of production. So to summarize and to put it more succinctly, a business should shut down whenever they cannot cover their variable costs of production. So even let's suppose, let's flip this around one more time and let's say that we are able to sell each wreath for $50. So price equals $50, the variable cost equals again $25. But let's suppose that we can only sell two wreaths. In this scenario, we still have the fixed cost of 175. We have the contribution margin of 25. So each wreath that we sell is still helping us out by $25 but we sent, we can't cover the total cost of our fixed cost, but we can still take a large dent out of it. So now, instead of owing 175 for the fixed cost, we owe 175 minus 
50, so we only owe $150. So even though we we're not a profitable business, we're not making profit, it's still beneficial for us to keep producing because we can cover all of the variable costs for each reef and we can make a little bit of a payment towards that fixed cost. So it's not perfect, we can't get everything covered, but we can at least owe less money. So shut down if you can't cover your average variable costs. Keep operating if you can cover your average variable costs. I know this is a hard topic. Like I said, it was one of the hardest things for me as an undergrad. I couldn't understand why would a business shut down even if they're making money selling. But the thing you have to remember is they're not covering the cost of their production. I hope you found the video useful and I will see you next time.